fellas. Try your luck. Take a guess on how many little old chickpeas I got in this great big old side and win yourselves some money. Oh, man, I know I ain't gonna win, so I know I ain't gonna try. Oh, come on, man. For one little old time, you could get lucky. That game, yeah. You know, Clarence, well, Warren's right. Come next Friday, more than 100 people be in here to make a guess. Why, man, you could win yourself for just one little old thin dime. You could win yourself a brand new $10 bill. Oh, it's like throwing it down the sewer, man. Now, what you want to go call old poor side of the sewer for? I'd say 150. 150. Right, 150. <laughs> now, that's talking. All right, come on, come on. 250. 250. You got it. Right. Adam. Hey, Adam, brothers. How about a beer? No, thanks. Everybody staying nice and cool? So far. Wow, now that's good. Is it? Yeah. I'm waiting for a phone call. We got some brothers down at the police station and the hospital. They'll be in touch. Well, I sure hope nothing happens. If anybody dies tonight, I'll tell you two things. I ain't gonna be responsible for no riots, and I ain't gonna be responsible for myself, you hear? I hear. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. We've had some car trouble, and uh, the gas station across the street is closed. We were wondering if we could use your telephone. Uh, you say we had some car trouble? Well, I'm by my two business associates and their secretary waiting outside. In the street? Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. Racial polarization. Black and white forming two separate communities, each cutting off meaningful contact with the other, sometimes actually warring on the other. It's a terrifying prospect. The unity of the nation disrupted. Its energy sapped, its civic peace shattered. A tragedy of catastrophic proportions. The welfare of all of our citizens threatened. We've been warned, but have we heard? Have we grasped the reality and the seriousness of this situation? What are we doing about it? Isn't it possible that our existence as one nation under God is jeopardized because there hasn't been liberty and justice for all. This is certainly the most serious issue of our generation. We all know there's a problem, but we tend to treat it as their problem. Let somebody else solve it. It's our problem. The bells toll for all of us. What are you doing to purge your heart of any form of racism? Is a member of another race welcome in your neighborhood, in your home, at your dinner table? And what about your business, your labor union, your social club? Is the dignity of all men respected regardless of the pigment of their skin? Are they treated justly? And what are you doing to bridge the widening gap now separating the races? Have you tried to initiate meaningful dialogue? Have you taken steps to establish contact? Remember, the only thing it takes for the triumph of evil in the world is for good men to do nothing. Phone's right there on the post. But why don't you go out and bring your friends in off the street? They'd be safer, more comfortable in here. And maybe I could sell you all some whiskey. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> like old times, Adam. Old face coming down here slumming. They really threw their money around. Hey, sure, sure. And you guys would shuffle and bob your head and grin. Well, now look at them. It meant bread, man, bread. Don't knock it. Oh, ho, there you are. There you are. Come right on in. Come right in. Gentlemen, ladies, uh, make yourselves at home. Make yourselves at home. Have a seat, mister. Have a Thank seat. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, maybe I can send you something to drink. This is a recorded announcement. The Automobile Club is processing calls prior to yours. Please do not hang up. Now well, they're busy. We will process your service call. As Just have to hang on, I guess. Fact is, Mr. Thank I'm you. expecting a call. This is a recorded hmm. announcement. Well, I'm sorry. The Automobile I... 
This call of yours, uh, it's important? Yeah, man, it happens to be. Well, I don't like to tie up the phone. Well, how about a little libation? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, do you mind if we use the phone to call a cab? Now, that would only take a couple of seconds. Sure, go ahead. Call a cab. A cab? Hold on, what are we going to do with the car? Leave it here. Leave it here? We'll pick it up in the morning. Oh, come on, Mr. Coates. You leave that car here overnight and there'll be nothing left in the morning but a couple of axles, if that. Is that a strong possibility, mister, or an absolute fact? I mean, is that a law of nature you're talking about? Not that anybody asked you. I'm not blaming nobody, but you know as well as I do what would happen. Well, that can happen anywhere. That's exactly true. What's the address here? 302 Hinkle. Hello. I'd like to get a cab at 302 Hinkle Street. Oh, South Hinkle, that is. South Hinkle. Yeah. My name is Taylor. Soon as possible. Yeah, thank you. Now, Mr. Just call me Portside. Portside. My real name's Augie Port, but I've been called Portside ever since I can remember. That's the reason my place here is known as a Portside. Ah. Well, Mr. Portside, Portside. My name is Taylor, Dick Taylor. Oh, Dick Taylor. Glad I'm doing you, man. Definitely. <laughs> and what are we drinking? A bourbon. Uh, bourbon? Uh, vodka, double. Vodka, double. And a bourbon for me. A bur bourbon for you and a Coke. That's right. Oh. Well, would you guys care to join us? Why not? Uh, bourbon and water, uh, Portside. Right. Yeah, bring me a beer, Portside. What? <laughs> Two bourbons and water. Bourbon and water. <laughs> now, that's better. How about you? <laughs> How about you? Well, thanks. Well, I hope your call comes through soon. So do I. You know, white folks are real puzzled to me. <laughs> yeah, they actually picked the cab down here this time of night. It's not just stupid, it's dumb. You know, I read an interesting article in the Time magazine the other day about automobiles being stripped. It seems that a couple of social psychologists planted a car over in the John Bigby district, which is about as... Uh, buzz, buzz. Uh, Buzz, buzz, yeah. It's about as wasp as you can get. It's very sharp. Anyway, they left the keys in the ignition, you know, and they left the hood up, and they photographed what happened from an apartment. Oh, well, what happened? Well, in 12 hours, that car looked like it had been gone through by a bunch of locusts. I know what you mean. They stripped it right down to the chassis. They even cut out the upholstery. And all of this, mind you, was done by carloads of proper white people out for a drive with their families. So what does that prove? That's a good question. Well, I think that proves that you can't equate theft with racial or ethnic backgrounds. You make things pretty simple for yourself, don't you? You know, I've got a couple of years on both of you, young man, and uh, I'm supposed to know something about life. Well, let me tell you that you just can't go around shouting that black is beautiful and white is ugly and white is beautiful or black is ugly. It don't do nothing but stir up trouble and arguments, you know that. I'll tell you what life is about. Life's about business. Right. That's what it's really about, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's buying and it's selling and it's trading. And you've got to get along with people to do that. Love is good for business. <laughs> Mr. Coates, that's an epigram. And it's true. Yeah? yeah? Love's good for business? Oh, except when you bring the in-laws in on it. <laughs> Ward, go check on the cab. All right, what's the gimmick? Huh? Guessing game. Time of guess, winner takes all. What's in it for you? My man, it's like Lucky Buck's green stamps. Good for business. Mm. Brings people in. And don't cost me a thing. Good thinking, good thinking. All right. Why don't, um, why don't you fill up another stein and just make it for us, you know? A buck a piece. We'll play our own game. Now you got some. Got something there. Maybe you can get rich while you're waiting for your cab. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. Check it out, will you? Dummy. The dispatcher said he sent the call out ten minutes ago. How could he? He only called him three minutes ago. <laughs> How about it, you guys? For a buck each. Why don't you guess the number of chickpeas in this stein here, huh? Oh, man. No way, man. No. Well, if everybody plays, including Portside, that makes eight of us. Eight to one odds, you can't beat that. Oh, can't again, mister. That's an even money bet. How do you figure that? Well, look around. Four blacks, four whites. I call it an even money bet. Well, so what? What's wrong with that? I don't like the odds. All right. 
I'll tell you what. I'll put you and your friend in for a buck apiece. You win, we split. Is that a deal? Yeah, well, oh, sure, man. How do we lose, <laughs> huh? If you have to ask, you'll never know. How about you? Are you in? No, thanks. I'll tell you what. I'll give you the same deal I gave your friends. You win, we split. Is that a deal? I said no, thanks. What's the matter, baby? I thought you people liked to gamble. That's not gambling. That's guesswork. <laughs> what do you want, a cinch bet? You want to roll dice in a blanket? <laughs> Oh, since the big sports plan. Count me in, Portside. How's my credit, huh? I only got some change here. I'll put in for the little lady, too. The hell you will. Well, you can count me in, but I'll tell you one thing. It's not my lucky night. Hey, I've been wondering about that. What brings you people off the expressway into this neighborhood? Well, actually, we weren't on the freeway, you see. We were... Well, Hinkle Street's just about as fast at this time of night. This time of night, you don't mind driving down Hinkle Street. Let's just uh, call it an act of faith. What are you guys sitting there like that for? Remember we're partners? Well, why don't you go up there and take a guess? Write your number down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ward, go let a fire under that cab company. Yes, sir. An act of faith, eh? What are you, some kind of kooky, bleeding heart? No, I'm a lawyer. I've done a lot of work on civil rights problems. Or civil wrongs problems, whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah? How come? I don't know. Maybe it's glandular. Maybe it's uh, just my own self-interest. I'll tell you one thing, though. I think I can understand a black man a lot faster than he can understand me. How can you understand anything about a black man? Just by knowing that I started my life with an unearned advantage over him? Oh, come on, Dick, will you? I started my life with just these two bare hands. Lucky for you, they're lily white hands in a lily white world. Maybe so, but I found the harder I worked, the luckier I got. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for the sport. Listen, Buster. I live in a house just two blocks from a colored neighborhood. Not very far from here, as a matter of fact. In ten years, I will own that home. I've got two cars, two color television sets, a black and white TV. Which you keep in the maid's room, yes? <laughs> That's pretty funny. But you tell me what's so funny about that colored neighborhood. Paint peeling off the buildings, garbage cluttering up the hallways, kids running wild in the streets. Let's hear a few bon mots about that. No, I can't fault that. Can't fault that at all. All of us can't be born rich, but a man can be clean. And the father should know where his kids are at night. Well, you're missing the point, Portside. All this gentleman is explaining to us is that he is naturally superior to those ghetto spades. I didn't say that. That's not a social consideration to him. That's a law of nature. Jokes. Big words. <laughs> the point is, most of you people just want a handout. We don't want any handout. We want you to get the devil out of our way. Stop wearing your blue collars like they were ermine. Stop handing down union cards like they were family heirlooms. Spare us, oh God, from the weeping liberals who want to march with us, sing with us, and then head for their country clubs glowing like Christian martyrs. Deliver us, oh God, please, from the merchant Jews who make a living off of our blood and sweat. Listen, you know, I think I could use another drink. Yes, I'm sure I can. Does anybody here want another drink? <sighs> Arguing this way. I told you what it was all about. Business. That's all. Buying and selling and trading. War. Check on the cab company. Yeah. I'm Jewish. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Jewish. Adam. So? You know. A sense of uniqueness can be boring in its victims. If I make you yawn, I'm sorry. 
I know what it is to be a Jew first, and then a human being. Hey, let's hear it for Miss Jewish. Welcome to the club. Oh, yeah, things are tough all over. Have you heard about it? But they may have been a lot tougher if there hadn't been a few small voices like Jews and liberals and human beings speaking out against injustice and for justice. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this, this cab company's really giving me fits. The dispatcher said he's had to call out three times. Keep after him. Taylor, go up there, pick some number, anything. Let's settle this thing. Yeah, but this is the third time I've called you. Well, hurry it up, will you? Listen, don't pay any attention to that guy. He's just a troublemaker. It's true, Mr. Coates. You know, I've always been in trouble the other way, too, too liberal. You know, my first job, I was fired because over the weekend, I, uh, I joined a protest march and was thrown in jail. <laughs> my boss said he only wanted Americans working for him. Americans. Well, you've got no problems with me. You're very kind, Mr. Coates. No. Um. Listen, what are you so depressed about? What do you expect from these people? Appreciation? You give them a little bit of cake and they want the whole thing, you know? They won't even let you have a bite anymore. Well, not that I blame them. I mean, when you're on a winning streak, well, that's not the time to drop out of the game. Yeah. Who spread the word? Okay, as long as they're still alive, I'm gonna do my best to cool it. But if they die, well, the hell with it. Now look, you get all the kids off the street, to the church on Spring Street. I don't care if they sing, pray, or shoot crap, man. I don't want one kid on the street. I don't want trouble one with the cops. Yeah, later. Think the bells will hold still for him, Adam? I hope so. What is it? What's happening? About a couple hours ago, two little colored kids got shot running through the alley back of the canal. Well, who did it? No mystery. Cops. One black, one white. Hey, the action's over at the church. I'll see you later. Hey. You heard him. I mean, if those kids die, this neighborhood will go off like a Roman candle. Call it. When trouble comes, I make tracks. Oh, uh, port side. Yeah. If I will check the bed, we are partners. Hold my money, huh? Yeah. Honey, are the kids home? All right, now get in the car and take off over to your mother's. And look, honey, don't argue with me. Just go. Right. Mr. Coates, if we don't get out of here before this thing blows, we're gonna be in trouble now. This dispatcher can holler all night until he's blue in the face. No cab is gonna come over to this neighborhood tonight. Listen to me, I want you to get on the phone and call the janitor over at the Laramie Street building. Now, he's got a pickup truck, he'll come and get us. Laramie Street. Yes, three or four. What's the difference? Janitor's probably over at the church with the brothers. No answer. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm getting out of here. Go ahead, sport. Look, I'm just trying to take care of my people. This may surprise you, but I'm just trying to do the same thing with mine. Act of faith, eh, baby? You don't mind driving down Hinkle Street because you understand black people, huh? I am a peaceful man. I don't like trouble, and I don't like violence, and it seems to me that you do. Oh, you want me to go to City Hall with my problems in the morning? Just be nice and law-abiding, eh? 
while you go on working for that slum landlord. I'm just a landlord, period. I didn't make the slums. But you sure make a profit out of them. A profit, huh? What do you think we're doing down here tonight? We're inspecting these old buildings to see what we could do to fix them up. Do you realize that there are more restrictions on these buildings than some buildings on Park Avenue? There's an inspector around here that, that, that lies awake nights thinking of problems for us. Wouldn't he take a bribe? I don't think that that doesn't happen. Now, I do the best I can with what I've got. Somebody's got to own these buildings. And somebody's got to pay ten times what those rotten, fested holes are worth. You gotta charge high rates. The insurance in this neighborhood is sky high. You know, I couldn't even get any, uh, coverage on some of these buildings. These tenants won't keep their places up. They'll stuff a dirty rag or a newspaper into a broken window pane instead of getting a new pane of glass. The stairways are blocked with trash. Well, that janitor of mine is over at the church you talked about. These people turn their homes into fire traps. They don't give a damn. Oh, what about that big liberal? Tell us that theft is not related to ethnic background. Tell us that white people and black people can burn in the same fire traps. Well, that's real integration. It takes time, don't you understand that? Whose time? Your time or mine? And what about you, Miss Jewish? With all that talk about one small voice speaking out against injustice, are you pleased to work for these gentlemen with their fire traps? I did what I could. I went to speeches. I marched. I sent money. You just can't well, you change the whole take system. Take your strength where you can find it. It's natural superiority. Life is just a business: buying and selling. Phony liberals. Well, you're in a death trap, a fire trap, right now, and you haven't got any insurance. There's nobody coming to save you. So just pray for the dawn's early light. I pray that that fire out there doesn't get any closer. Yeah. When? Now you listen to this and listen good. You sit on this thing. No one spreads a word. Maybe to the church. One's dead. God. Hey, listen. Get these people out of here. Go get your car and get them out of here. Oh, why should I? Because they might get hurt. That's no business of mine. They came over here free as the wind to collect some money from some dumb spades. Well, they got their bread. Let them go on home any way they want. Or can. Adam, you said yourself everything's going to be nice and cool tonight. Now, if just one of these people gets hurt, all hell's going to break loose, well, man. That's I... just what's got to happen. Better than they are. Get those people into the kitchen. Get in the kitchen. Well, I ain't running from nobody. This is your only white world, friend. Get in the kitchen. Get in the kitchen! Hey, hey what's up? Yeah. Give me a drink, will you? Right. Well, the boys in the uh, church, Adam, they're waiting on you. What's happening outside? Well, the brothers not the only ones uptight. Cops getting real thick out there. Yeah. Uh huh. What's this? Well, that's what's known as a act of faith. Mm. Hmm. Hey, look. You get back to the church. You keep the brothers cool. <laughs> they want to talk to you, Adam. I'll be there. Okay. Be in church later. Take care, Pop. Okay. Nine in, nine in five. Oh. Forty-seven. <sighs> what do you know, baby? You win. You keep it for me, Portside. Okay. My car's parked up the block. I'll be back in a minute and take you people home. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Don't make too much of this. 
If there's got to be an explosion, we'll pick the time and the place. That's something that should worry us all. The present polarization of the races can be reversed only through meaningful dialogue. Racial conversation is like any other form of human communication. It requires mutual respect. The other person is a human being, which means he possesses the same rights, the same dignity, the same importance that we claim for ourselves. If we condescend to him, treat him as a child, or an inferior human being, we make real dialogue impossible. It also requires honesty. We have to trust him enough to allow him to know us not as we would like to be or think we should be, but as we actually are. It's usually better to reveal our true feelings, even if they should be hostile, rather than to pretend to be something we're not. We also have to learn how to listen. The other person has a great deal to give to us, but they can give it only if we are willing to listen to them. They have their point of view. Let's try to understand it. They have their way of looking at things. Let's try to get into their shoes. By respecting each other, by being honest with each other, by listening to each other, we can bridge the gap that presently divides the races. We can build a social order together where the dignity of all men will be respected, where the rights of each individual are safe, where the freedom of everyone is guaranteed. By working together, we can reconcile the races and make this truly one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. <laughs>